this is Gali Goldfarb and welcome to my Gorilla Life Coaching videos. Five times a week I talk about a quote that can help you move your life to a better, healthier and happier place for you and I hope you gain a lot of value from these videos. So how are you doing today? I hope you're doing good because today our quote of the day is by Ewan McGregor and it says, the thing about parenting rules is that there aren't any and that's what makes it so difficult. Today I decided to talk about parenting since it is my eldest daughter's birthday. There is much to gain from this video, even if you are not a parent. There really aren't any rules for parenting, just for communicating. I have learned so much from raising my four daughters. I have learned so much from them about myself, and I've changed so much just from raising them. Raising children has never been an easy thing for me to do. My two eldest daughters are mentally challenging and suffer from epilepsy, and my third daughter is diagnosed with ADHD. But as I have said in my books and one previous video, I have learned three major things from my daughters that have made me more happy and more successful in my life. And these three things that I'm going to be talking about in this video are unconditional love, communicating effectively, and surrendering. This did not happen fast. It took me many years to learn these three major lessons, but they have transformed my life completely. So first let's talk about unconditional love. I made a whole video on unconditional love that you may want to watch. At the end of this video, I will provide a link. The only way to raise a child to become the best they can be is to firstly accept them as different people from you. Your child is not you, but a different person. You do not have to control them and you do not have to have control over them. You only have to have control over yourself, which is basically really the only thing you can have control over. And when you do control yourself, your thoughts, your emotions, and behave with integrity, self-love, and self-esteem, then you will not only automatically accept their uniqueness, but you will also be an example to your child to learn to behave in a way that is acceptable and good for you, for them, and for everyone. Your child does not need to be like you, and they do not need to do things to please you. You do certainly do not want a child to become a people pleaser. This is very destructive behavior. Um, I also made a, a video about people pleasing. You also do not want your child to go living without empathy. They can learn how to behave through following you as an example. Accepting them the way they are and loving them the way they are as different from you is the first step towards really good parenting. If you love your child unconditionally, and I've made an, a video also on unconditional love, which you can link to at the end of this video. So if you love your child unconditionally, you accept them for what they are without trying to change them, but only doing the best you can do to provide them with their needs. Our children do not need fixing. We are the ones who really often need fixing before. We need to fix ourselves before we go and harm our, our child's self-esteem in a way that will follow them throughout their whole life. Of course, our child will still need to learn and grow to become better as a, an individual, a better version of themselves. But learning and growth can only happen on a foundation of acceptance rather than trying to forcefully change them to become little versions of you. Now, you do not have to suffer because of your child's behavior, on the other hand. If your child exhibits some kind of difficult behaviors, that are harmful to you or to others, then you must help them to understand what the results of their actions will lead to. They will not have respect for you if you do not have respect for yourself. You should not accept difficult behaviors from your children that you would never accept from anyone else. Although you love your child unconditionally, you must have boundaries in place as to what is acceptable for you. A child will actually feel more secure when they have clear boundaries. In fact, if you were to be seated on a chair, you would, much, you would be much more likely and much better place to go off and uh, look at your surroundings and, and uh, explore the place around you if there were walls around your chair rather than a chair uh, being put in a place that is completely open with no boundaries, uh, just empty space. You would feel much more secure when you have the walls or the boundaries around you than if you did not have anything. So therefore, children must know what is acceptable to you. 
Most often they can see this for themselves through your behaviors, but they will always be testing you. The best way to follow through with disciplining your children is first and foremost to discipline yourself. Work on your own self-esteem. Be willing to treat your child in the same way you would if another, another adult uh, who you respect and you love would behave in this way. You may hold different viewpoints than your children, but if you show understanding and acceptance rather than insulting, then they will feel seen and they will feel heard. Can you imagine another adult who would behave in a way that your child behaves? How would you react? Would you insult, chastise, or lecture the adult that you admire if they behave in the same way your child is behaving? Probably not. <laughs> and this moves us to the next stage of good parenting, which is communicating effectively. This is much more simply simple than, than we can really imagine. There are many ways in which we may communicate with our children, and some of these ways, unfortunately, have very harmful effects on their self-esteem. The foundation, which is the foundation for them to enjoy a good life. For this reason, communicating must be a conscious process, and it is really not difficult to communicate properly. Communicating starts, first and foremost, by listening to what your child is saying, while also acknowledging their thoughts and feelings. And now, after you improve your listening skills, you also want to know how to effectively, effectively talk with your child. When they do something that is not to your liking, the best approach is to describe what they did, and then to describe how this makes you or anyone involved feel about their actions, and lastly, to describe what they need to do if there is anything that they need to do. Describe is the key word for effective communication. Making the shift from blame, insulting, lecturing, towards a show of understanding and acceptance by describing the situation and your feelings and what needs to be done is the best way because then your child will feel seen and heard. If you behave with your child with courtesy, you listen and acknowledge their feelings and thoughts, then they will be more respectful of you and they will be more respectful also of themselves and of others. Now, what about praise? Praise is also important to talk about. There is appropriate praise and, appro and praise that is not helpful and even confusing. In appropriate praise, the praise states exactly what we appreciate and like about the child's actions. We describe what the child has accomplished and describe why this was good. The child then feels recognized and understands what was good about their behavior. And this type of praise increases their self-esteem. But when praise is vague, like you are a good boy or uh, you're so, or I just love you, it's not enough. It makes them feel confused and, um, and a sense of loss of control. They do not understand why they are pleased, praised. And uh, instead of increasing their self-esteem, it actually eats away at it. So let's move on to the last step of good parenting, which is surrendering. And this was actually the hardest for me to do, really the hardest to learn to do. The ego should not be allowed to enter the equation of parenting. For good parenting, the ego must be left out. Power struggles are not a part of good parenting. You did not receive your child to become their boss, but rather to bring a unique being into this world. Your children are not a reflection of you, so you can learn to surrender. They are not a reflection of you or your parenting skills or really, they are their own unique beings and you cannot change who they are. You can only lead them through effective communication, which as we said is listening, describing, and being your best as a good example to them. So that you, this is the only way you can really lead them. They are not your toys. They are unique beings that need the freedom to go out and find their purpose and their gifts in life. And surrendering what you think is right for your child and accepting and supporting them for who they are is the only way to allow them to grow and become the best version of themselves. You cannot force your will on a child without it having a very negative effect on your child. 
Of course, you will not be happy with every act of your child's self-expression. This is well understood. They, they may not be a agree, agreement about, about their behaviors, but acceptance allows their self-esteem to develop. Stop fighting with your child. Let go of your expectations of how the child should behave, what the child should do, or, what they sh or how they should be. Let go of your expectations. Let go of your fantasies for your child. Um, as an example from my life, when I realized that my two eldest daughters who were born with mental disability were never going to be like other children, my fantasy of having a happy, normal family life just flew out the window. It was as if my child, um, I first found out from my first child, so it was, it was as if my child had died that day. None of my dreams for this child could come true. But when I released my attachment to my expectations of how my life should be and how their life should look like, then I became free. And I also freed them to be who they are. And this was a very, very liberating moment. You can never really change another person. And it is not your responsibility as a parent to make your child happy or the way you think that they should be. Because this is what either society or your neighbors think it should be. Uh, your children are here to experience and engage with life and all that it provides that is unique to them. And this also includes hardships. Some of the greatest things that happened to me in my life came as a result of my hardships. They made me who I am. I learned to overcome problems and improve my character because I really had no choice. It was only the hardships that made me become a greater and better version of myself. So children need to experience difficulties. And if we as parents take away these opportunities to experience the difficulties from our children, then we are not good parents. I know that this may be controversial and not what most people think, but this is true. I allow my daughters to experience all sides of life with me, the hardships and the good times. And when they have difficulties, they must learn to deal with them. They must learn to accept no at times. I am there to support them, but not to remove their hardships. As an example, I brought my daughters to, see the, uh, to the hospital to see their grandmother on her deathbed. And I say no to them when, they are, when there are other responsibilities that we must do beforehand. By allowing them to deal with hardships, they learn the lessons from these hardships and you are allowing them to become better and more compassionate human beings. These hardships are real. They point out our attachments, which through our hardships, we learn to release. One of the greatest lessons of life is learning to release attachments. And I made a video on this as well, which you can link to at the end of this video. Our attachment to results and expectations always will lead to suffering. And when we release what we think should be and we surrender to what is we gain the skills to go through life in a better and more fulfilling way no matter what life throws at us and this is a very important uh, lesson not only for you but also for your children when we allow our child to go through the struggles of life we prevent them from continuing to suffer for the rest of their life when you learn to give up control but still do your best then what will come is what needs to come. Parenting is only hard when we make it hard. We make it hard by resisting that our child is a person different and separate from us. We make it hard by seeking power and control over our children. But power and control over our children only may mask our true feelings of unworthiness. And this is, of course, not ideal for any of the sides. God gave you this child not to give you power over the child, but to enjoy a life with someone who is different from you so that you learn to accept different people with unconditional love while learning to surrender what you are not in, in place to control. You also learn from your children effective communication and listening skills and to release all attachment. And this is what bringing up children is all about. It is a process of releasing the ego and becoming a better version of yourself through the often difficult path of raising children. So as I always do with these videos, I will provide you with a question that you want to ask yourself 
so that the answer will help you move to a better place for you. And the question of the day is, where can I improve as a parent and add better communication, more love, and release control and attachment to results with my children? So think about this. As usual, I recommend writing this question in a notebook that you have especially prepared for these coaching sessions so you can look over them and see how you are improving your life. Now, to finish this video, the affirmation of the day is, I am a great parent. I love and accept my children unconditionally while also giving boundaries through effective communication and surrender of the results. I am a great parent. I love and accept my children unconditionally while also giving boundaries through effective communication and surrendering the results. Now tell this to yourself as many times as you remember to do so today because an affirmation has the power to alter your life. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and also visit me on thegorilladiet.com for any health uh, um, tips and wellness programs and books to help you improve your life in any aspect. Thank you very much for joining. Mm -hmm.